Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to Drums and Drams. My name is Cameron and today we have another episode of Quick Sips. Now on today's episode, we're gonna be taking a look at this Valconis lineage, a single malt whiskey from the great state of Texas. And before we go any further here, I have to say thank you to a very generous patron and supporter of the channel, Colin Murray Bain, for sending this bottle along at this point, quite a few months ago. I'm sorry, Colin, it has taken me this long to get to this review, but I'm very excited to check this whiskey out today. So let's go ahead and talk quickly about the stats of this bottle, and then we're gonna get right into it here. This is, again, a pot distilled Texas single malt whiskey clocking in at 94 proof or 47% ABV. It is non-chill filtered and no coloring has been added. So that's all we need to talk about here. I'm gonna go ahead and get to it. Let's check this whiskey out on the nose and see what we get. <sighs> all right, so when I poured this whiskey out into this glass, before I started you know, filming this review, the room filled up with this smell, and that is the first thing you get here on the nose. It is just decadently rich honey. It's really dark honey, that beautiful malty characteristic that we all know from, you know, certain, I would say, Highland scotches in particular. Um, you just get this beautiful malty backbone, and this definitely has that, that dark honey characteristic. It's just really, really lovely. Yeah, and as soon as you kind of get beneath that, you get behind that, There, there's a ton of like, what what would you say, like maybe mid-range or middle of the road, like tart fruits. I'm getting some caramelized orange, some apricot, you know, again, with those honey notes, you almost imagine like a honey drizzled apricot or something like that. But yeah, there are these sort of middle of the road fruit notes. There's nothing bright like a pear or a green apple. There's nothing too dark like a, a plum or a fig. It just sits in that mid-range. It's really, really nice. Now, no Texas whiskey would be complete without <laughs> what we like to call, you know, the Texas funk. This definitely has the Texas funk to it. It's sort of a combination of like uh, some oakiness in there, but almost a little bit of like coffee bean or espresso with this particular whiskey as well. Yeah, maybe a hint of lemon zest in here or a, a tiny bit of some extra citrus thrown in. And yeah, um, you know, something I've noticed with this whiskey is I've sat with it for, you know, quite a few months now. Again, sorry, Colin, it took me so long. <laughs> One thing I've noticed is like a little bit of a toastiness developing in here alongside that maltiness. So I get almost like a toasted bread note. Um, and finally, I would say that there's just a, a hint of hint of mint going on here as well. Something a little bit brighter that kind of opens up the senses. So I think that's all I've got here on the nose. Let's go ahead and go to the palate and see what we get. Cheers. Mm. It's a pretty drying mouth, uh, mouth feel here, actually. It's a little bit thin and watery in some ways, but I get a little bit of a textured mouth feel and again, also this sort of drying quality. It's just sucking the moisture out of my mouth. Now, as it sort, you know, as it sort of starts to roll back here onto my tongue, you get a lot of those toasty qualities, a lot of the malty honey, uh, honey type notes, and then also again the same type of fruitiness that I'm getting on the nose. Now, as we get into the finish, that Texas funk is very, very present. It's slightly bitter maybe more than slightly bitter. <laughs> um, there's, uh, there's a bitterness to it that is not quite coffee bean espresso. There's something else kind of thrown in the mix that I don't really understand. I'm just gonna attribute it to Texas <laughs> at this point. Um, but I would say that the palate is almost like taking a piece of toast and slathering it in honey and then throwing on like some really I don't know, almost like syrupy orange slices and apricot and stuff like that. Um, let me let me do one more sip before I before I go any further here. Yeah, okay. I was like, am I going to say something crazy here? I don't think I'm going to say something crazy. So I said piece of toast. I said honey, and when you're when you're thinking about the fruitiness of this. Imagine like those fruit cups you buy from the grocery store that sit in like that 
kind of kind of generic fruity syrupy liquid in those fruit cups now imagine the fruit cup is filled with like peaches maybe pear you know apricot um uh what am i thinking orange that kind of thing imagine a fruit cup stewing in all of those fruits and that like syrupy liquid putting that on a piece of toasted bread with honey that is kind of what i'm getting that the really tart uh, thick rich sweet syrupy quality to this is like a hundred percent those fruit cups that you used to put in your lunch box as a kid that is totally what i'm getting here and yeah again same thing on the finish here you get that bitter texas funk that, that I can't quite place. It's not like terribly off-putting, but it's not pleasant either. So um, let's do one more sip and we'll wrap this up. All right. So yeah, as Colin, I think maybe said to me in a text message, this is this is a Texas funky fruit. I mean, it really is just a funky single malt whiskey. I think a lot of people are really gonna dig this. I think it's a great, option not only for predominantly scotch drinkers but also for bourbon drinkers to start to understand the the landscape of single malts it's a really neat in between and um and i i guess i i guess i have to recommend this you know it's not terribly expensive i want to say it sits around 40 to 45 bucks msrp um it's it's just a great way to experience texas whiskey to experience a single malt that is got a little extra dimension to it it's a little more heavy-handed than a lot of you know scottish single malt whiskeys at this particular abv and uh yeah i think it's a, a pretty solid whiskey through and through especially if you like some really funky fruit along with some nice malty honey and toasty type notes so that's all i've got for this video thank you all so much for watching if you haven't already Please like this video, subscribe to the channel, uh, click that little bell notification button and turn on all notifications to find out when I'm going live, which is usually once a week and when I'm dropping new content. And if you're interested in supporting the Drums and Drams channel, if you like what you're seeing and you want to you know, help the channel financially in some way, please check out the Patreon. The link is in the description below. There are three different tiers there at this point, uh, five, 10 and $15 tiers with different reward systems. So check that out, give it some thought if you want to help support the channel. Otherwise, I think that's all I've got. I'm going to get out of here and wrap this up with a final sip of this Balconis lineage, which I think is a pretty solid whiskey, even though it's got a couple of little quirks here and there. Um, if you see it, if you're interested in checking out a single malt whiskey from Texas, this would probably be a, a really great place to start, especially at the price point. So cheers, and I'll see you next time here on Drums and Drams.